What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Chaos Theory podcast. I am your co-host, Ivan, a.k.a. Kinetic. And, of course, I got my main man, Kenneth, Chaos Theory Lobos. Um, we have a returning guest, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to guess by now who it, that might be. But before I get into that, let me get a couple of announcements from Ken. So take it away, bro. What is up, guys? This is the Chaos Theory podcast, season two, episode seven. You guys asked... And we listened. The McRib is back. <laughs> <Not just kidding. laughs> uh, before we get into today's episode, guys, there's a couple of topics that I want to go over. Um, unfortunately, and very sadly, we lost uh, Edward Medina, a.k.a. Lalo. Lalo Venus on PSN, Baby Punk Baby, and also Marvel R420 on Xbox Live. Um, I've known this guy for years. I'm sure that you guys that, that are listening, you know who he is. He's one of Fontana's uh, premier players. Um, he did a lot for the community. He would host countless sessions in his backyard. He was very generous in allowing us to take up space and run sessions and, and do all these things. And the guy was always in a good mood. I never remember him being upset or angry or irritated at anything he was just a guy that loved life and and he loved to play video games and um do all of these things and it's just we have to bring him up and keep his memory alive and that's what we intend to do uh rest in peace lalo we hold you forever in our hearts in our memory and we'll continue to uh keep your name alive he was a good guy man yeah it really was yeah this one hit hit really bad yeah uh, so there's going to be more information to come in, in regards to uh, funeral services. Uh, if, uh, go for, we're waiting on a GoFundMe link or something of that nature. So when once we get that information, we'll go ahead and post it up. That way you guys can uh, support if you can and just uh, continue to keep his name alive. Uh, in other news, we're going to have that Arcade Shock tournament uh, coming up October 19th, I believe. Um, there's a flyer that's already uh, kind of floating around, but as soon as we get more information, we'll plug that. It's going to be in October, guys. Set your calendars, and it's going to be a good one. So make sure that you ask for the vacation time now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, without further ado, you know him very well. You know his story up until this point. He's a man of very... I was going to say very few words, but no, you actually have a lot of words to say. <laughs> More like a man of yeah. little introduction. <laughs> yes, my man Joey Ball, we are back. What's going on, brother? Ken, Ivan, What's thanks up, brother? for having me back, guys. <laughs> yeah, apparently uh, back for this episode that nobody wanted. and uh, No, people nobody. wanted it, all right? Don't listen to that. <laughs> everybody <laughs> wanted this sequel, okay? Uh, <laughs> now, the your episode that we did last month, it set the community ablaze with controversy, <laughs> opinions. And you know, that Goodness. that's that's the funny thing about Marvel 2 lore is there's different sides to the story, all right? Or, or people insist that there are different sides. Some people remember things differently. I mean, I've gone through it myself. Like I've you know, said things on here and people have tried to counter, counter argue that that's not how it went, mm. even though it is how it went, all right? <laughs> but that's the beauty of it, guys. This is a podcast that we like to do. Um, I don't really make money off of this. I do it for the love of the game. It's a passion that's of mine. Right. I enjoy doing it. And remember, if you feel like you disagree with something that's being said on here, by all means, grab a mic and do your thing. Make it, I mean, Facebook Live video is free. Yep. Hop in front of the camera and, and state your case if you disagree. And trust me, guys, we welcome that. Like, if you want some feedback or you want to give us some criticism about something or you want to maybe clarify a few things that maybe we got wrong, you know, it's you're more than welcome to voice your opinion. So it's no problem there. Yeah, and on top of that, we try to be as unbiased as possible. Yes. That's... It's it's the truth. The truth is what it is, and there are there is no gray area when it comes to that. That's right. Uh, Joey, we left off last time with uh, your history with uh, Alex's Arcade. I, I already told you, it's the rivalry of the decade, right? What, it's a one-man army against <laughs> an army of individuals. <laughs> uh, recently... You had a couple of guys that kind of gave you some uh, backlash on on what what happened with the last episode. Yeah, and one of those guys is Deathwish. Now, mm -hmm. Deathwish mm -hmm. is a is an ad adamant listener of the podcast. He supports it. He enjoys it, uh, and he had a difference of opinion. Um, can you kind of fill us in on on what what's going on there? Yeah. Um, so I was actually 
kind of surprised by the feedback after the episode. I kind of thought that my statements about, you know, the happenings at AA would just kind of clear up some confusion and settle some things to where they're just like, ah, okay, whatever, you know, you, you got that or whatever. And instead the exact opposite happened and I'm kind of puzzled by it really. I don't feel like Daniel really death wish. I don't, I don't feel like he's really like listening or he really comprehended what I was trying to say, but he's mixing his timelines also. And, um, it's just kind of confusing because I said what happened. He's not refuting what happened, but his criticism is now like, oh, well, you're bringing up old winds like from the past, like <laughs> Al Bundy or whatever. And I'm like, well, hold on. That was kind of the point of the segment, right? Ken asked me about that era and, you know, going to Alex Arcade and who I played and who I beat, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that's that was kind of the topic, bro. I mean, if you're gonna get mad at somebody about that, you could get mad at Ken. <laughs> so, Don't shoot the messenger. So, yeah, so, look, you know that was the history. It happened. Um, I beat a bunch of you guys. I didn't say I beat all of you. I didn't play Andy. I didn't play Deathwish. I didn't play ray while he was there yeah i remember that you you, you specifically like, name dropped people that you didn't play or you didn't beat. i just said it was easier to name the people right. i didn't you know play or beat right. it's like you know i beat rudy i beat akuma gustavo um the the um obese oscar um <laughs> um who else am i missing uh you know kalo is in there uh akuma aldo that guy it, it's another guy kind of like pushing back on stuff that happened and saying that, you know, it, here's the thing. That was what was happening in 2013, right? We we kind of specified around that 2013 to 2014 era. That's kind of what happened. And it is what happened. You guys only kind of beefed up and leveled up after AA closed down. Gene came into town and you guys adopted Gene. <laughs> and you started going to um what was the other place this this was Our, the era of uh esports esports, esports arena esports arena In so Santa they Anna. went from i don't even know why we kept calling them alex arcade but whatever that's who they that's who they are that's who they're always going to be so alex arcade shuts down and they have to migrate over to esports arena and they get gene and now <laughs> all of a sudden yes Maybe not for the first time, but oh my goodness, you know, whatever. The, I don't judge, <laughs> but the, the views and opinions of chaos theory. <laughs> look, okay, um, okay. So they right. went, so they went to esports arena, guys. In twenty, was it twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen? I think that's around twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. So 2015. so Alex Valle, who's a who's a famous uh, fighting game community member. Everybody knows who he is. Um, he had a part in opening up this place in mm, uh, in Santa mm. Ana, and it was a place where everybody could just show up, and there were just nothing but chairs and monitors all over the place. Like BYOC. It was like yeah. the whole place was a BYOC venue with like a PC venue upstairs. Yeah, and yeah. all you had to do was just pay for the entry, and mm -hmm. you could just set up whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. And so that so that was the new spot for Marvel Two, at least on Wednesdays. Oh yeah, right. Because right? it was right. only open Wednesdays, and I believe Saturdays. Maybe, but the the thing is, they used to play alongside the Wednesday night fight tournament. Yes. So that's what would happen is they would host Wednesday night fights, and it was already kind of like a fighting game environment. So of course the Marvel guys showed up. Yeah. And so the, the main, I feel like the main gripe with uh, with Daniel with Deathwish and everybody else who's kind of pushing back on the last episode is. I feel like they're taking it as you you saying that you beat everybody and there wasn't an exchange of losses. And that's not true at all because you didn't know you, you, that was never said or implied. 
I never said it was indefinite. Like I was just beating their asses indefinitely. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I, th- I think that's <laughs> that's what they were trying to say, or Daniel was trying to say, that, which is why he was bringing up like, oh, don't you remember I beat you this time? And then he starts shifting to different years where it's like, okay, now we're jumping timelines. I'm not disputing these other things. I mean, right. some of them I might, but. The thing is, we were, we were hyper-focusing on my introduction into AA. Yes. And that's what happened. The golden era. I'm sorry. Like, that's just <laughs> what happened, bro. Like, he, everything culminated to, to that happening. It was like me being, uh, you know, had a car, had money, had a bunch of time, hardly any responsibilities other than work. Yeah. Um, had a crew that I was playing with often. Went over there. And I did my thing, bro. Like I, all the conditions were set for it. Now they're complaining about it today that, that I bring it up, even though it was a podcast where that was the topic. Yeah. Right. I don't know why you're getting, you know, ass mad about it now, but it happened. I mean, you can't. And to call me out today and think that you're going to like make up for it somehow is illogical it just doesn't it's not it's not going to hit the same me as like a 40 year old married father is not going to hit the same as when i was in my prime you know that crew money no responsibilities all that shit you know come home from work play marvel like it's it's not the same bro it's not the same and and that's why you know on that topic uh ken I just want to get your opinion. Yeah. At what point is it okay to just say, you know what? You've had enough. (laughs) You could hold that. (laughs) You know, like how many times do we got to do this? I feel (laughs) and I, I feel like it comes down to, you know, people say keep it in the game, right? They say if you don't, if you don't like somebody, don't let it affect, uh, I guess playing them like in a, a tournament or first to ten or something. It, it's like people still begging to see the the, the match between Yipes and myself, mm-hmm. which I don't think will ever happen, yeah. just because there's just too much. Unfortunate. Yeah, or even somebody like uh, Fanatic. Like people are pushing for me to play Ooh. Fanatic. Oh my! Goodness. And I don't think that I would ever sit down and, and and play him, just because I cannot. I can't stand him. Right, I, and that's just that's just my personal opinion, and so I do have a win over Fnatic the last time that we played. I beat him pretty decisively, mm-hmm. and I think that he's had enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's really it's really up to you. Like, if you got the last win and it was pretty decisive, it's, yeah. there's really no reason to to run it back again. And, and well, in that specific case, I mean, what's a run back gonna do? <laughs> it's just going to further cement that he's had enough at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you do lose it, it's uh, at that point, it's just a matter of opinion. Does it erase? Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, Neo and uh, Jtron. Mm. Neo and Jtron uh-huh. were going back and forth for a bit. I remember yeah. that. And Jtron beat Neo very decisively. Ooh. And Neo's counter to that was, well, don't don't forget all the the sets that I beat you. I beat you more times than you beat me. One win, mm-hmm. as decisive mm-hmm. as it was, doesn't erase all of the other L's that I've given you. So, okay. so it'd be, it'd be kind of in the same spectrum, no? right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for Neo, that's his cope, I guess you could say. <laughs> and for and Jtron, on the other hand, doesn't believe that. He says, "Well, the only thing that matters are, are recent results, today going forward." Right? Yeah. 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 So, what what's the measuring stick here? What's the standard? I see how it's. I see how it's like. It's complicated, right? I think it's circumstantial. It is. I think it's circumstantial. I, th- I think it's like, you know, life happens to everybody, right? And, but the circumstances of everyone's life are not the same. No, absolutely so not. So you kind of have to take that into consideration. If you're talking about, are you referring to maybe like a possible, like if you were to do a possible money match against, let's say, Death Wish, the circumstances surrounding your personal life would have to i mean now you're talking about training mode and so here's the here's the weird area 
that I'm in now that I wasn't in back in 2013, right? So it's kind of like I could play for like 20 bucks or something like that. And that's fine for what I'm, you know, the level or the amount I'm playing the game. I'm invested into the game. Today, right. Right. I don't need it, but it's fun. It's just for fun. Right. I could play for a hundred few hundred dollars. Right. Like I used to, but I just can't invest now. Now it's like, I have to get serious. Now I'm going to sit down I'm going to run training mode for like multiple hours a night. I'm going to, you know, like that kind of time investment to is just not really there for me anymore to, and I can just go work my job and make more money. Like, it's kind of like, I don't need to put in that time investment for that amount of money because I don't, I can make that amount of money, like better just working. Like what, you know, it's like a weird place to be. So it's kind of like I'm just I'm just kind of having fun with the game at this point. Like a you need this more than I do. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't need to go play you for like a hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollars or whatever at this point because it's just it's it's what I call a pyrrhic victory. So you know, if where anyone has never heard that term before, it's this this general Pyrrhus led his army to a victory he suffered such hard losses on his army that it, it felt like an L it feels like a loss. So it's like, I can, I can go through what it takes to get that victory. But at the end of the day, I'm going to still lose like, okay, I put a couple hundred bucks in my pocket, but I lost all this time. And you know, my wife's pissed at me now because I'm (laughs) out in my garage fucking grinding Marvel. Like it's 2013. Like, that's just that's just the unfortunate like kind of sad area that I I mean not sad I'm fine with it I'm totally fine with it but these guys are asking for just something that's like the ship has kind of sailed on that right you kind of got to hold that right unfortunately I'm not going to avoid you we could still play no problem right it's just not going to hit the same <laughs> winter like whatever happens not going to hit the same now you know, a lot of people have been talking about wanting to see me and uh, Jay Fresh. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And these guys, the AA guys come and hear, you know, the podcast. And now they're throwing shade on Jay Fresh. And they're like, and, you know, people like Akuma Aldo is saying, oh, you're only taking the, the money match with Jay Fresh because he's easy. And I'm like, oof. First of all. I, I'm not like begging for that match. It's just kind of a match that like, whatever, something happened. We had like a little spat and now the community wants to see a match. Fuck it. Whatever. That's, if I, and that's it. And that's it. That's, it. that's, that's really it, how it came about. That's what it's going to be. That's how it yeah. came about. That's how, how it's going to be the, you know, they're claiming I spent the majority of last episode talking shit about J fresh and Alex arcade. <laughs> I don't feel like I, that's, that's not true. Like it's I, not, I, it's not, I no. opened, we opened talking a, briefly about J fresh. We moved on and then we, we barely closed a little bit of time with AA. Right. And now they're, you know, they don't like that. The money match between me and J fresh is more in the spotlight and, and coming in and throwing shade on Jay fresh now saying that, Oh, they only, he only wants to play him cause he's free or whatever. And it's like, dude, that's what the community not wants right now. It's not my fault. You guys don't make yourself more relevant and like put yourselves more in the spotlight going places, you know, whatever. Nobody knows who you are. They don't want to see me versus Akuma, like Aldo Garcia or whatever. They don't know who you are, bro. Like, I'm sorry. That's not what they want. So that's not what we're going to give them. For present day AA, there's still a couple of names in the hat that that you could play. And I feel it would be a competitive set. Um, Oscar, skinny Oscar, or Mm -hmm. skinny-ish, he's leveled up the past couple of years. Yeah, 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 his MSP is is pretty flowchart and and it does well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kala would be an interesting one too. You'd have to chase him. I played a lot about a lot with Kala. Like, see, like a few of those guys I'm still like cool with. I'm, I'm cool with skinny Oscar, cool with Kala. Like I never had, 
Never had squabbles. Like, you know, squabbles. I, you know, even like random Rudy. It's like, yeah, we talk shit to each other, but we're cool. You know, like it's it's fine or whatever. Yeah. I just think some of these guys are getting a little too butt hurt, like beyond the game butt hurt. You know. I I agree. Uh, um, if you were to run sets with with the the names that you just mentioned, that would be pretty entertaining and pretty competitive. Mm. Um, for today, and it's th there's really no personal animosity, like you said. Not it's, really, it's just, no. just hey, I don't care. Let's put up a couple bucks and let's see what happens. And we'll have a beer after, you know, and, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, just that you know, I we've done the thing where we've gone for a few years, like we've gone to Santa Ana, we've gone over to we go to them, right? We always going over to them, and yeah, playing them. We did that for a while, like you know. Me and Ivan would play team money matches against them. They would nerf Ivan by saying that he can't play, he can't pick Cable. He's got to pick Santhrax yeah. or whatever, and that that sucked. Like we did that dance a long time, bro. I'm I'm sorry if I'm not gonna make the effort to go all the way out to Santa Ana and play you guys, but I'm not gonna avoid you either. If if you guys want to show up at a venue or something like that, fine. Like that's fine. We'll play there. I'm not gonna just super prioritize it. That's all. So the, there's standards that need to be met um hopefully you guys can work it out man like i said these are matches that i w i would want to see personally <laughs> like i need to be there right. but hopefully we can work something out uh you 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 made a, a brief mention about hosting okay this is around the time that mm. joe's cabana <laughs> opened opened up shop right uh around this time there was there were a lot of spots that were that were kind of in rotation you had servbot hosting in san bernardino you had Lalo in Fontana, um, Ruben's Bomb Shelter in uh, Colton. We would go there maybe like <laughs> once a month, Bomb yeah. Shelter. And then we had Joe's <laughs> Cabana, right, in uh, in Southgate. So this was cool. I mean, you guys were fortunate enough to have enough space to kind of open your doors to people to come and run some Marvel. Yeah. Like in your case, you had um, we had Black Juan, we had Ivan. Mm -hmm. uh, who else would come by? Uh, like Ricky. Ricky, uh, right? Melvin. Melvin. Um, let's see. Like Big Dave, uh, IGT, the guy you play on yeah. Street Fighter sometimes. Um, who else? I, I, J-Tron before he moved. J-Tron would come yeah. by. So the, the cool thing was that you had a Marvel 2 setup, or maybe two, and yeah. then you also had like the Xbox 360, and, and yeah. where Black Hawn would play like Injustice. Ultra. Yeah, yeah Injustice, Injustice or something like that, or Mortal Kombat. Ultra Street Fighter 4 or something like that. So would you say that your, your sessions were more recreational or more for training? Depended. Depended on if there was like a tournament coming up mm -hmm. or money match or you're going to go play this other crew or whatever, then it's going to be like more training. And if not, then, you know, like we'll mess around with other games. We'll just kind of casually play or whatever i remember there was a, a little bit of uh like a civil war going on like between <laughs> you guys and you, you guys couldn't like come to an agreement on what the ranking system was like who was above who and whatnot like ricky would say he, he was better than you or something like that oh yeah so the, the, it was kind of like black Juan was kind of the one instigating instigating it <laughs> right it's kind of like you know, when I stopped playing Marvel 3 and I'm like, okay, I want to come back to Marvel 2 and like do better, whatever. And uh, started hanging with the Regency guys or they started coming over in my place. And, you know, Black Juan would see that, okay, he's getting better and now he's beating Dara. Okay, now after Dara, we're going to see oh how Oh my God, Dara, him. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Confusion. Confusion, yeah. Oh my goodness. Confusion. <laughs> so, um, and then he'd be like, okay, if you could if you could beat Melvin, then maybe you could play, you should try playing Ricky and now, now you should try playing, you know, Ricky and then, you know, Jatron moved away, so now it's like the last one standing is like Ivan. Like, so that I, I just trying to challenge myself against all the, you know, all of them after they started like coming over to my place and playing. Now, the cool thing is that you guys had a, a diverse uh, talent pool. You had except I the Magneto. Uh, I think you kind of filled well, in the Ricky, gap there. Well, I didn't have a Magneto play against. Not, not just ricky oh kinda. that's right yeah. yeah 
Well, yeah, Ricky had already given up on on MSP, I think, and he was more with. Uh, I remember Thrax. him rocking Thrax, Storm Sentinel, Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. He he felt like it was too, it's too much work to keep playing my. It can be, yeah. yeah. And I understand. And he says that uh, you know his little girly hands hurt or whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. I what? think the, I think the worst possible thing he could have done was move on to Mortal Kombat. He started Ooh. playing Mortal Kombat Nine. And then it's it's like what happened to you, bro? Now you're just garbage. Something about Mortal Kombat Nine is like a kryptonite to your Marvel Two skills for some reason. <laughs> he like, just can't let it go, dude. Every time oh I talk God. to him, he's like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> good to play Mortal Kombat, man." <laughs> like what the? Knock it off, dude. Just knock it off, bro. He's like, just play Mortal Kombat, please. I'm, like, I'm no. like, no. No, no I will not, I, sir. I won't. I'm sorry. No uh, you know, and you know what? Shout outs to Melvin, guys. Melvin mm, yeah. is is a guy who is a true he's super passionate of the game. He was kind of like the the yin to Michael Chaos's yang. Like just <laughs> just solid demeanor, just no nonsense straight to business when it came to playing Marvel 2. He took every set like it was life or, life or death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember him Still. and my chaos ran a set, a first to ten at Ray's old old house. Mm, uh-huh. And, bro, you could cut the tension in the room with a wow. knife. The the set came down to 9-9, nine, nine, and my chaos barely won the last no match. Shit. And it was one of those, like, the match ended, KO, and then they looked at each other and they just fist bumped like, good shit, man. Uh-huh. And you could tell Melvin was like, fuck, man, that could have been a feather in my cap. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's how that's what the game does to you, man. It's just you get lost in it. The fuck. intensity shifts up to 10. And, that's right. And you never know what's going to happen. Yep. Right? But it, he was he was another guy that's disappeared since then. No, I just played him last night. Oh, you just played him? Yeah. Oh, how, how's he doing? He's, he's good, man. He, he comes over to my place every once in a while on like a friday him and black Lawn man i miss that guy and... dude yeah 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 he still comes around yeah shout out to he's melvin man. he's good, good. he's bro. super solid he's he's gotten he's gotten a little better i think in my opinion he's still rocking he's, thrax yeah he's still rocking thrax nice yeah. dude so around this time joe um there was a jump mm. in in skill where i think you starting to host and doing your own sessions you, I remember you leveling up a lot. Like your MSP at one point was like, okay, I gotta watch out for this guy because <laughs> you were doing double tri jumps. You were doing a lot of a lot of uh, smart movement. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you attribute that to? Your your sessions, playing online. What what happened there? A little of everything. Just experience um, with you know the online along with the you know the playing with the rfc guys once they started coming in so it's kind of like my experience building up to xbox live allowed me to not drown on xbox live to where i could level up you know and then leveling up enough on xbox live put me in a good enough position to where i could spar with the regency guys but there was still like with them, it's like there was still another hill to climb because it's like we're playing for real, right? We're playing yeah. like on Dreamcast, on a CRT. Like this is all like legit. They're they're used to it. Um, not saying that anybody on Xbox Live was bad. There was a lot of super solid players right yeah. there. But I mean, you do need the. There are things, certain elements missing from playing online versus offline so you just have to have that offline experience yeah and absolutely that's I agree with that. that that goes into my next my next bullet point mm. um it was around this time that we had formulated the illuminati the west Coast oh illuminati. my god <laughs> so it was kind of like a superpower a marvel 2 superpower right oh my and it goodness. was me spartan Duh. duck vader yeah Wes, Wes, aka Blockable Laser, and I think J-Tron. and Jtron was like the last edition. Uh-huh. It was like five pieces to yeah, the Infinity Gauntlet. The Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> I remember, I remember you making a comment um, saying that we were kind of spoiled. I guess in that sense, oh, your secret, super secret sessions. Our secret so, sessions, yeah, 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 yeah. And our sessions were always like they were mostly 
like we would play to play, right? Like we would play serious, but it was we were like more chill than I was. It was more chill, yeah. Than I was making it seem like Wes yeah, would yeah. would fire up the grill and make some carne asada or something, or nice. Ray would grill. But it was just we were at a higher level of talent, I, I think. But yeah. but that particular level of steel sharpened exactly even more. Yeah. So Xbox Live, you can't compare the two, right? Like you just said. Playing somebody online doesn't compare to that offline. I'm playing on Dreamcast. Like, I know what works and what doesn't right. work, right? In today's climate, how can you... That's what I'm saying. Circumvent that. Like, the, what can you do to, to fix that? That's what I'm saying. That's what I was kind of alluding to earlier when I was, you know, when we were talking about AA and I was saying, like, hey, dude, you know, the thing is, to be honest, this ship is kind of sailed as far as like, you know, the hundred dollar plus money matches and stuff, because yeah. I'm no longer in a position where I could, even if I wanted to train the way I used to. Right. Like not saying that there's nothing I can do. Like, sure, I could play fucking Xbox Live and then I could play on training mode. Uh, and that's about it. Right. And so. At this point, I feel like for for me to just have, I, I can still just be good enough to have fun playing the game with my amount of experience, plus just Xbox Live and and uh, sporadic, you know, offline sessions here and there. Like for me, that might be enough. For a newer player, I would recommend like if you want to get good, you're gonna make have some to, fucking friends, you, dude. Make some fucking <laughs> friends and get ready to grind and and do a lot of dirt. But I'm I've kind of paid my dues in those eras, so in those areas, so it's kind of like I've reached a, a good shape. It's kind of like working out, right? It's like you can get to like a certain level of fitness or whatever and then you're like okay this is a level i know i can reach so if i fall off a little bit i know i can get back to what i can get back to right i know what i'm capable of getting back to the so i know what i'm capable of getting to as far as being like in shape at the game but i also don't feel like i've ever hit my plateau at the same time because what would happen is like I'd have like a crew would I'd play start leveling up leveling up leveling up and then the crew falls apart and then I'm like oh fuck and I'm trying to like start from scratch again so yeah, it's like, like okay pick up the you know whatever get into Marvel 3 get out of that get with another crew you know regency level up level up level up, level up and then boom, they start falling apart and I'm back at square one again so I, I reach a new plateau each time, but then it falls apart at the same place, and I'm stuck at that plateau. Consistency is key, man, especially with this game. I feel like I have enough muscle memory built to I can take a couple weeks off and then just... Uh-huh. For, yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. Yeah. For gotta... you, Joey, everybody's different, right? Yeah. Everyone's different. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that your schedule opens up. Mm -hmm. You have all this all this free time on your hands. Like I don't have a family anymore. Yeah, you like... don't have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does the ideal training camp look like for you? What do you need to do in order for for you to be in peak form against, let's say, a first of ten against uh, Gustavo, for instance, from a. Um, what do you need? So, like, this is. I don't know if I would still need this today, but it, what this is what I was doing back in 2013. So I go to work, get home from work, you know, eat dinner, play Marvel <laughs> or, or, you know, play some other game, um, either play online or play, you know, with the Regency guys or whatever, or go to AA or go to you know that this shit was like <laughs> embarrassingly at least like you know four days a week probably i'm playing like pretty heavy that's not embarrassing at all some of these guys we, are playing daily, every fucking day right like i know daily. the aa guys were like they all met up it seemed like they all met up at that arcade every fucking yeah. day like any day you go and they're always on the machine but yeah i mean at least you know maybe 
four days a week or five days a week or something like that i was playing like every one of those days that's how you stay sharp man that, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah we've all done it we've all done it that's so, how and some people still continue to do it the interesting thing though is you have people that play like seven days a week and they still don't get any better it's the way you train not how much it's it's quality over quantity yeah to a degree that's the question right is what's missing here yeah um, do you need somebody to tell you hey man don't do that Oh, you could have done this. You could have done that. Like, do you need a coach? Uh, in my oh, opinion, you're saying currently right now. So, so right now, if I'm, if I wanted to do something like this, right. it's like, obviously I have to be in shape. Like, so if, if Magneto is one of the main characters I got to use, I have to, you know, putting, I would, I used to do at least 30 minutes of training mode a day. Nice. 30 minutes to an hour of training mode, something like that. I would practice a bunch of different shit. I would practice like guard breaks, um, make them regular jump while blocking <clears throat> so that I could try to like run up and, and uh, guard break them midair yeah. and stuff like that. Super jump while blocking, you know, like all these different scenarios. I would, whatever was the limited, the, the, you know, training mode, options available i would try to uh you know recreate or imagine different scenarios and play them out and stuff like that. how's your your pc do you have a good pc it's, nah, it's a not very it's probably a little outdated and can it if you strong. can run if you can run an old dc uh -huh. it has the record option for the opponent so you can oh, program that's right i remember you, you can program the opponent to do things mm -hmm, now so if you mm -hmm. want to practice like matt you know, people that like to mash low kick, you yeah. can kind of program that. Oh, that's that's dope. And that's a, that's a s excellent tool. Huge step up. Yeah. I think it's a game changer. I, yeah, definitely. It's kind of funny because when CVS 2 came out like a year after Marvel 2, its training mode was amazing in yeah. comparison. Third like, Strike also. Super, yeah, yeah, and Third Strike also. Super sophisticated training modes. Marvel 2, here's some combo practice, Fuck. basically, and that's fucking it. <laughs> yeah, Joe, we missed the train on that one, dude. God <laughs> damn. Well, do you think yeah. they knew everything, um, you know, in order to incorporate, like, a more sophisticated training mode? Do you think that they... Probably afterwards, once they got the feedback from the community, oh, yeah. somebody must have said, hey, it'd be, it'd be useful if we had a record sure. option. Yeah. And they said, oh, great, because we have... CBS two and third strike coming up. Let's just throw that in there. Well, the third strike came out in 99 or 98, something like that. So it, it was before. before. Oh, it was before. Marvel. Yeah. It came out before, uh, Marvel two. From what I remember. Yeah. Marvel two came out oh, 2000. Man. Third strike was a year before. Maybe they just didn't want to deal with it. But the dreamcast port of third strike, did it already have the record option? I believe so. Cause when, when, so. cause third strike came out alongside the, the street fighter anniversary collection for PS two. Yes. The, yeah. the, the 15th anniversary. That's the port I played it on because the Dreamcast port is like the worst port for Third Strike. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not familiar, so I don't know if that one had the record option. But CVS 2 came out for PS2 in, what, 2001? Oh, yeah. 2001, right. I believe. Yeah, and GameCube, too. That's, think, that's what yeah. I'm referring to, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So who, know, who knows? But yeah. either way, it would have been a great tool to have. It would have been awesome, yeah. Yeah, especially especially uh, back then, you know, when we were just bare bones there training was, mode. There's so many <laughs> stressful situations in Marvel 2 that yeah, it's just like you don't want to deal with. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, as, as far as it would be that, you know, time for training and then playing against a real opponent offline, like right. somebody, uh, you know, close to my skill level or better. Well, yeah, because yeah, because you and I have done that before, and I remember you felt like fuck, man, like this doesn't help me. It's <laughs> well, because it's like at a there's levels to it, right? So it's kind of like if I if I'm really out of shape, like I would have to do all the training mode prep first before I play somebody like you, because the when I would play you, sometimes the thing killing me the most is me dropping combos. Oh yeah, for sure. Because it's like. I know I could kill you if I like, I know what to do. I get like black Juan, <laughs> black Juan used to tell me this all the time. Like Joe, you're, you're great at landing the hit on people. You're just, your execution is just terrible. Like if you just worked on your execution, there would be hardly anybody out there fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, like 
maybe he's right. It's just that the, the, the time and the dedication to, to put into, you know, execution. I mean, maybe I'm being a little lazy, but it is, it is, you know, it does it's, take, it's work, it's work, yeah. bro. It's, it's work. <laughs> like it really is. I mean, and I started relying on training, you know, training partner pretty heavily. And that's why I was really pissed off at Ivan around the time of like the Ruben money match or whatever, like the, the times I, the, or the one time I money match Ruben, it's like, it was on a whim. It was kind of like day of he hits me up. He's like, Oh, Hey, I'm in the area. Wait, uh, hold on. Hold on. We're going to get oh, into yeah, that. No, We're no, going to yeah, get into I mean, that. <laughs> like, I should hold trust on that, me. But trust but me. That's, let me know that's where we are, we're at right now. Uh, <laughs> well, we are, we already <laughs> talked about you opening your doors and, and having oh, sessions yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, this yeah. was kind of supplementing your needs. Yeah. Um, yep. In, in terms of practicing offline with an actual opponent. Oh, yeah. A lot of these guys today are, as, as you would say, they're spoiled. Like the AA guys have oh, each other yeah. to play with. They play on a daily basis. Um, the people that play online, like PSN, Xbox, there's a there's a, a group chat that we have, right? Yep. So people are very good at coordinating and saying, hey, man, are you free? Yeah. Can we play? And you get your practice in that way. As mm-hmm. opposed to just training mode or arcade mode or whatever the case. You have to play against somebody. Right. Right. Especially if you're preparing for something. And that's the kind of thing that, that kind of upsets me, now, not, not to dwell too much on it. Yeah. You have a lot of players that are really good, mm-hmm. like Regency Rob. Um, Oscar, Iron Man King, is really, really good, and it's it's kind of upsetting that they don't do anything with it. <laughs> like, compete or, hey, uh-huh. man, let's do a first to ten. You know what I mean? Yeah, It's yeah. like all that talent is just it's just kind of going to waste. Like, yeah. why, do, why do you grind every day if you're not – aiming for a goal like where is the goal post right it really does make me kind of shake my head and and think like okay i mean i know there's having fun but you're grinding like at a more obsessive level you're not picking like, team show though why dude aren't you yeah you're not yeah, yeah you, you're kind of <laughs> what what's going like what are you actually trying to do here right so i feel you on that it's kind of like how are you grinding so much only yeah. to stay in your own little corner um, I'll never understand. It. Yeah. Well, back then, like I said, you were leveling up. You were you were getting better. You were sharpening your skills. And here's the thing: when when that happens, when you level up and it becomes evident, it invites challenge. Mm-hmm. And so people were starting to take notice. And there was a couple of names out there that were like, "Let me call this guy out and let me see what's <laughs> going to happen." The first one was free lunch. Ah, oh, good old free lunch. All right. Now free lunch is still. On his journey, he still has the freaking Ryu uh, the satchel, satchel bag the, the over dirty his shoulder. Laundry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to find that laundromat still. But back then, he was uh, he was trying to get better, and he made some great leaps and bounds in a short amount of time. I remember playing him at James Games, and he was just awful. And then he made some changes. Mm. He switched characters. He picked up Cable, and then he started to become a threat. And you guys were going at it still for a awful. <laughs> you guys were going at it for a while. Like, how did that start? So, <laughs> so I, I've kind of known this kid. I've seen him around. Me and Serbot used to play online back in the day. And then I finally met Serbot at, like, uh, Super Arcade. I'm like, oh, all right, cool, man. I know who you are now. And then, you know, this is kind of free lunch. was kind of part of his little, like, goon squad, right? <laughs> they're, they're part of that crew out there. And I was just like, okay, the there's, there's this guy or whatever. And I'm like, okay, this guy's – he's his name's Free Lunch. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck kind of name is Free Lunch? And I'm like – they're like, oh, yeah, it's because we went to Evo one year, and he, he went up and asked one of the staffers if they have free lunch. And <laughs> – I'm like, no shot. Bro. <laughs> that's one of those names that's just going to follow him around for years. He's been years. free lunch ever since. No matter how many times he tries to change his name or write his name down as something <laughs> else, you know, like, Ed to the world or whatever. Like, well, uh, There was a time period where he ended up getting a new job and he started working for FedEx. So I started calling him free shipping. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but it didn't last oh, long. Oh, my God. <laughs> So he's gone yeah. through many names. He's been trying to call himself a uh, Refly Kid. Oh my god! And then recently, yeah. he, now he wants to be called Refly Man. No, dear. Oh, <laughs> did he say Refly Man this time? Oh my god! Yeah, goodness. he did at the last uh, thrill of session. He's so. Oh, shit. 
I think it's a little blurry, but from what I can remember is he took this very like famous photo at Evo with oh, a cosplayer <laughs> named KO Police, I believe. This and is uh, what he didn't know at the time was that she was actually a he and yeah you're not wrong so he posts this picture and he's like oh me with you know sexy ass sexy ass ko police or whatever and you know he posts it up he couldn't be more proud right in this picture <laughs> just the happiest day of his life he didn't get free lunch that day but he got this free photo and uh you know the comments start rolling in they're like hey uh buddy uh I don't know. Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but uh, <laughs> and, you know, I, I kind of joined in on the trolling, right? Oh, man. And then he's kind of like, "Oh, you know, like, uh, I'll whoop your ass or whatever." I'm like, "What kid? Calm down, you know." And then I see him at uh, Alex Arcade. Him, and, you know, Sirbot and the boys stop by over there, I think, to battle those guys. And I think he had a match against. Johnny Five, which is uh, Spartan's younger brother. Yes, sir. And uh, I, you know, they had they had like some kind of rivalry going on at the time, and they were like you know the young up and comers of Marvel Two, and they. Yeah, Johnny was a killer, yeah, bro. Yeah, if, yeah. yeah Johnny's stopped, really good. He stopped, but mm -hmm. towards his solid, end, bro. he was like he was getting good. Yeah, yep. it, there was a point where he was better than Ray. Ooh. Like Ray had slipped behind because no of, of family and all that, and and Johnny was really putting the hands on him. Yeah. He, he was picking MSS. He was picking MSS drones. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Thrax, mm. and he was solid, bro. Like if if he would have kept playing, who knows where he'd be at right, right. now? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, I would say he he was comparable to um, to Lazy Reaper. Ooh. Uh, a little bit yeah. sloppier, but okay. but he knew how to finish, and he had gotcha. his he had his DHCs down. Yeah, yeah. Shout outs to Johnny, man. Shout that guy was a beast, Johnny, dude. Yeah. So th so then, what happened with? Oh, he beat he beat free lunch. Yeah. At that, and he was talking a lot of shit to him or whatever, and I was just kind of outside. I see him um, free lunch come out, and Johnny's like laughing at him, talking all this shit, and I'm just kind of like, ha ha, dumb kid, whatever. <laughs> like, and he's just like. Oh, I'll whoop your ass to you watch just you wait or whatever. So then <laughs> we start, I guess, talking trash to each other a little more online. And then, you know, Mike Chaos comes and takes this guy under his wing. So it's kind of like this is Mike Chaos's little pet project or whatever. And they they start setting up a money match. They're like, all right, we're going to do first to 10 for 100. And I'm like, all right, run it. And so... He set a date. They come over. This is around, I think, 2015-ish now because now I'm in Torrance. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I moved to, uh, moved into my own place uh, in Torrance. Um, set up my garage over there. And, you know, so him and Free Lunch and my Chaos come over for the money match. I was like, all right, it's time to play or whatever. Sit down. I think, you know, they got there kind of early and the other Regency guys are kind of like lagging it. So I was like, whatever, I'll just, we'll play now. They, they're they here now. Um, they already kind of like, you know, he already kind of warmed up a little bit. Uh, I don't want to keep these guys waiting forever. Like just, yeah. for, you know, my guys to show up. So whatever, you know, Hams, I think showed up already. Hamthrax, he was already there, but he's always been more of like, you know, the spectator dude, like on the side, but whatever, he's some support, right? Mm -hmm. So we start playing. I think he's picking like Scrub. And so I pick uh, MSS with Rocket Punch. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'm just, because it's against him. After a few matches, I think I might have picked MSP in the beginning, but after a couple of matches of MSP, I noticed he had like, this glaring flaw like he wasn't protecting his assist very well his 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 assist use is very like not good like Irre shitty. irresponsible very shitty. like reckless yeah, okay. very reckless so i was just like all right i go and pick you know mss rocket punch and i'm just kind of just slowly just 
just counter punching him basically and he starts he's starting to panic he's starting to sweat and so you know now it's halftime you know my chaos calls halftime <laughs> and it, all right half yeah time. yeah <laughs> halftime halftime joe it's really it's serious <laughs> now he calls halftime takes you know free lunch outside and they start having like i can hear him outside like, like he's, he's letting them have it you know he's all yelling at him cobra now, kai yeah. style <laughs> quiet do not don't take weakness in this doge <laughs> <Like>, uh, <laughs> And I'm like, I'm hearing it. I'm like, man, I don't think this is helping him right now. The kid, like, I kind of feel bad. It was counterproductive. Yeah. I was (laughs) like, you know what? This is a great time out because I'm getting to chill while he's getting kind of like grilled by the coach right now. And he's going to come in more shook than calm. Like, sure enough, he did. And that's what happened, and nothing changed in his strategy. Like it was almost like the timeout was worthless. Where was the set? My my place. Oh, your place. Okay, okay. My garage, yeah. and the score ends up being like ten four, ten five, something like that. Your favor, obviously. Me, I, I beat him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that that was like all right. Uh, that's it. <laughs> well, well <laughs> don't that's it. So all this trash talk led up to that, and we said and did the, the thing, and you didn't really have anything to say after that. I mean, no hard it, feelings it, afterwards, no. right? Like, it was just, all right, man, good games. Because Ed, Ed will lose. Free lunch will lose, and he'll just say, hey, good games, man. Like No, that. so that's the thing. That's a, what I appreciate about him is that, you know, as a rival, I barely call him a rival because he sucks, but... <laughs> I mean, he's gotten his but licks. He's got, no, no, he's not. He's not terrible. Like yeah. you know, he could have a good day or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, he's the right kind of rival because he'll still talk trash to you. We'll keep it within the game, but then right. he'll he'll change the tone, and we can talk about something completely else and totally be fine. You know, I was talking to him about Lalo earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my condolences to him. I, I remembered Lalo and what a funny guy he was, you know, yeah, like I'd definitely. be playing sometimes. And if I would get a win, I'd randomly hear him yell at his, the top of his lungs, Joey motherfucking bow. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, so, those are know, good times, rest man. Rest in peace, Lalo, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah you know, me and, and, and free lunch, like we're cool. We'll, yeah. We'll, free lunch is we'll a cool dude, again. man. Yeah. He, he, He's a, he's a little socially awkward at first. <laughs> you know, he kind of has a girl on you. He's a, a acquired taste. Like, uh, he is. Dijon really, mustard. I just kind of, I find myself looking sideways at him a lot. Like when he says stuff, like, you okay there, buddy? Like, yeah. Kinda... <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. But the thing is that training with Mike really helped him. Because mm, Mike is, is really big on uh, the, t- the tough love approach. So he'll tell you straight up, like, nah, man, don't, nah, man, don't do that shit. I feel like he has a Just kendo stupid. stick for when you fuck up. <laughs> Quiet, like, <laughs> pa, pa. <laughs> like if we if free lunch can, if free lunch lifts his shirt up, I'll bet there'll be some scarring. Welts there. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike is he's a great uh, training partner. The only thing that I didn't like is that like when I would play Mike, we would do first of fives. Oh. And if I was Stressful. up, if I was up really bad, like four or zero, he would reset it. He would reset the game, and he would say, "All right, now, all right, Ken, now this is going to be the real set." I'm like, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> so the last four games didn't matter. <laughs> and by the end of the night, I'm like tired. I'm like, "Oh, all right, I've had enough of this." <laughs> but it was always good because Mike took takes the game very seriously, seriously. Right. and it's. I mean, even though we, him and I, like, we'll crack each other up with wrestling jokes and movie quotes and all that <laughs> shit, but Mike prefers a no nonsense, like non recreational type of session. Mm-hmm. So no alcohol, no weed. The temperature in the room has to be right. Jeez. You know, like, like, like I said, everybody's different. So if you can cross off all the all the ch- the check marks on your list to have an ideal session, I mean. You do what you got to do, right? I suppose so. But on the flip side, there's also, do you want to get the best version of a player? Yes. That's right. So in a, such a sterilized environment, 
some of those people might not do so well, right? Yeah. So got to take that into consideration that's, also. <laughs> that's, it's like, what's where's the compromise then? So, and that, this is where a lot of matchups fall apart because you have your demands, the other guy has their demands, and you just can't like yeah. meet in the middle. And I, f- I feel like certain players can be unreasonable on purpose just because instead of saying about that <laughs> instead of saying hey man uh nah i'm good i don't want to play they they'll name all these ridiculous stipulations oh i one of the most famous ones that has been used against me a ton of times is like they'll block you with a ridiculous amount of money so it's like oh you want to play me five thousand dollars God damn. <laughs> That's a car payment. Like, okay, bro. Just say you don't want to play. Like, just. That's what I'm saying. Some people don't want to say that. It's just. <laughs> They'd rather just. It's a matter of pride. Or... Yeah, it's, it definitely is. They'd no, rather they, just hide behind them. They money. try to play this re- reverse Uno card with that by saying, like, oh, you don't want to play me for like $500 or whatever? What's wrong? Are you broke? And it's like, bro. Yeah. W- you know what I mean? Right, like yeah. you're the one avoiding just running the match and you're trying to make it about something else when it could just be completely about principle. I could be a billionaire and still be like, nah, I don't want to play you for $500. Yeah, right? exactly. It has, no, it, it has nothing to do with that. And you know it, the only reason you set the price that high is because you know, I'm going to say no. Right. And they know it. It's this funny little game they play. I fucking hate it. Imagine if she said yes. I wish yes. they would just not fuck. Yeah, if you just say yes. Imagine. And call- no, I've done this before. Like, I, like Tong Ji is one of the people that has done this to me, right? So he'll be like, oh, yeah, you, you think you won the real set? Well, it, well, if you play me for $1,000, I'll show you the real, you know, the real deal. I just fuck around with you the whole time. And I'm like, all right, run it. It's uh, Venmo, you know, send the money to my brother and have him send me a screenshot of it and so that I could escrow the money too. Completely calls his bluff and he just comes back with a higher amount. Actually, <laughs> 2000 <laughs> Actually, oh, you're down to play for 1000 Well, I'll bet you're too big of a bitch to play for 5000 Yeah, what do you say to that? And it's just like, okay, bro. What are we doing here? Let's move the goalposts again. Speaking of goalposts, the other rivalry that you had, which probably trumps, it it trumps free lunch for sure. Goodness. And I would say that it trumps AA, even though AA is the more fresh one. What? Your rivalry with Rube Billionaire. Hold on here. <laughs> I don't even know if we could call that a rivalry. How? Because at least with those other guys you've mentioned, I've had multiple sets with them. Whereas with this guy, I've had one. <laughs> Just one. But even though that even that one encounter has Plus generated... Plus a team money match. That, yeah, yeah. It, it's generated countless sound bites. Countless, I mean... Uh. In, Jesus. Almost an insurmountable amount of uh, buzz around the whole instance. I mean, <laughs> that that one money match that you had with him was more memorable, I think, than anything that you've had with AA. Uh, but like but how did it how did it come about? So we're playing with AA pretty often, and out of nowhere comes this dude, we're billionaire. Now I've only heard about this guy before as a low tier player because really had, yeah yeah because he would get i think to like grand finals and like the low tier tournaments um there's a tournament at they did like an offline low tier tournament at one of the evos or something like that uh-huh. and i think he got second or something with with team shoto okay and i was like okay this guy's pretty good with low tier or whatever and then um, later on, I find out, you know, yeah, he plays everything like um, top and bottom. So, well, his teams were always uh, weird, zone, like zoning, yeah, zone like unorthodox, yeah. zone heavy, zone heavy. So he yeah, picked Black Blackheart, Doom, Heart, yeah. Doom, Commando, Cable, Team Scrubs, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grimy teams. And he was always mm-hmm. a pad player, unless he played right. a James games. But I would always see him play on a Dreamcast pad. Right. I don't know how you can play on that thing, man. 
I mean, I've I never, used to. Yeah. At one point, yeah, it's not impossible. It's a it's a pretty good pad to play Marvel Two on. Oh man, I don't think I could ever. <laughs> I can't. I good, can't do it, bro. Like if you play yeah. like this, it and feels this, so awkward this, on this. This the finger plastic. is the assist two. And then this, like you know, thumb thumb over the pad like this, and then your, let's I know people can't see it, but it's like my index and middle finger are on like the top part where the buttons are on my right hand. And then my, you know, third finger over is hooked under the Dreamcast, hitting the trigger for assist too. So yeah. it's like that way you can do it. Some people can't like fanatic. I guess he was too retarded to like not be able to reach that trigger. So he like programmed the buttons together or something. Oh no, that's what he did. He sacrificed. He a, sacrificed assist, assist one so that he can get a baby dash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we'll get to that. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. But Ruben, oh, what yeah. happened? What happened there? So he comes out of nowhere and he starts whooping on some AA guys. I think Andy. He comes and beats Andy for like. A significant amount. That's of right. Now the controversy behind that is that oh. they played at Ducks. Yeah. It was Rubillionaire versus Andy Doom for I forgot what the yeah. amount, what the disclosure. There was a lot of side was. bets and stuff. A lot, and everybody was there. All the AA guys were yep. there. Mike Chaos was there, and when it came time to do money up front, <laughs> <laughs> Ruben didn't have it. Oh, I'm remembering this he now. He didn't have it. Oh, yeah, that his wallet. Everybody was saying that his wallet was oh, looking was really flat, thin. That he put a flat wallet on top he, of the TV. Right. <laughs> now, Ruben ended up winning the money match. I, I have the clip oh, somewhere. Like, it's somewhere goodness. in my camera roll, like the last 15 seconds or whatever yeah. it was. Uh, oh Andy God. Doom refused the handshake. He refused to shake my <laughs> chaos's hand. <laughs> Like he was just salty all around. Yeah. But the the big thing was what would have happened had Ruben lost that money match. Ooh. Time to go to the ATM. I mean, something, this is dude. was Zell was Zell around at this time? I mean, I guess he could have PayPal'd or something, but it was always cash up front, right? Yeah. So the we'll never know. Like we'll never know what would have happened. Well, that's the the the, the empty wallet was like a big bluff. Like it was like okay, you don't know if the money's in here or not, but here's a flat wallet. Let me put it on top of the TV <laughs> to represent my bet. So one side has cash in front of the TV, you know, the AA guys. Rue Billionaire has his He puts his freaking Link, Lincoln Park <laughs> with a chain on it, Hot Hot Topic wallet. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Velcro. <laughs> oh, I remember. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, and so the controversy around that was that basically that was that he showed up with no money, and you know the A guys were saying we know it for a fact you didn't have the money, so that was a controversy. Yeah, that was. But he big. won. I mean, he won. Yeah, that's true. Holy shit! So he wins. He beats Andy, right? Yeah. Um, he had also beaten Roundhouse. Oh, that's at Evo, right. at Evo 2016. Now that was after our. Um, this was after yours, right? Yeah, that was okay. after our match. Yeah. So before we get into the roundhouse thing, yeah. Um, how did how did that challenge come about? So between he, and him, Ruben shows up. Ruben comes onto the scene and he starts playing the AA guys, Andy, which we just mentioned, and I think he, you know, he he'd beaten the rest except for maybe. Um, Random Rudy, I think Random Rudy had his number. He he could never beat Random Rudy, um, but so then he starts, you know, me and Ivan start looking at him like, oh, you know, we could take this guy and Mike Chaos, like no problem, whatever, you know. So Ivan sets up a like team money match, me and Ivan versus Billionaire and uh, and Mike Chaos. We drive out to to Ruben's, you know, bomb shelter or you know, dog pound, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Again, <laughs> it's true. Wet it's market, true. like. <laughs> oh, no. So we go to Ruben's wet market, and it, we're like, okay. We I think Ivan plays Mike chaos like in by himself and he beats him one-on-one -on -one. and then we play a team money match and me and ivan just just 
demolish them. Shit, like, I wasn't there for that. No, you oh, weren't there. But for I that. remember. I remember. Yeah, we just like demolished these guys. We we grabbed the bag and we left, and that and that was like, you know, we were happy all the way home. And later on, these guys, of course, they're not happy. So it's kind of like they start plotting their revenge, namely, you know, <laughs> Ruben. Because there was a few like key moments within the the team money match where I beat Ruben and it, you know really shifted the momentum in our favor. So it was kind of like it's kind of like he he was targeting me at this point because he, he so one day we'd kind of been going back and forth like talking a little smack at this point and one day I mean he hits me up out of nowhere saying he was like playing a. I don't know, his little league baseball game or something somewhere nearby. He wants to come play. I'm just like, um, okay, whatever. Um, I hadn't played like in a little while, like two weeks or something like that. And I was like, all right, I can do this. I just need to hit up Ivan, have him get here like an hour early. As long as I warm up with him, I'm, I'll be fine. You know, this guy's like, whatever. I looked at Ruben kind of like, whatever, dude. I feel like I could just get in on the shit you're doing and just maul you. And, and I just didn't really, I, I guess I kind of slept on him a little bit like I shouldn't have. And I also shouldn't have relied on Ivan as heavily as I should, as I did, you know? Well, this is why people were calling him Livin, right? Yeah. Because he yeah. always lie because about what, where he was. <laughs> Ivan's a great player. But unfortunately, not the most reliable guy. If he's your your homie, you know, Jtron's one of his oldest friends and he'll tell you like oh, man. Ivan's the homie, but <laughs> I think we have a better relationship now, but there was a point where <laughs> oh, I just yeah. <laughs> did I could care less. You guys couldn't less. stand each other, yeah. I could care less about this guy. It's a little bit it's <laughs> I would say it's a bit more neutral now, but man. <laughs> Ivan has a tendency to get a little jealous here and there cuz he likes like when the shine is on him and then when it starts going on somebody else, he feels like a little bit like he has to throw some shade on. Yeah, that. <laughs> definitely. I was the most shaded guy in the room. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so Ruben hits duck. I think used to work kind of close to where I was in Torrance. And so he would show up. Oh yeah. yeah. He would show up to my place uh, every now and again. So duck shows up and I'm like, Oh yeah, okay, cool, Duck, and you know we're chilling. I'm I'm waiting on Ivan to show up so we, cause you know, they play similar team. They play like you know keep away styles and stuff like that. So I'm just like, all right, Ivan's not showing up, and Ruben, you know Ruben's almost getting there. I'm I'm hitting up Ivan up. Ivan's not answering his phone now. Now I'm fucking getting pissed and stressed out because I'm like, fuck, I haven't played. I haven't practiced. Ivan's not showing up. I, I relied on him a little too heavily, and I just kind of took on this match willy nilly on a whim, on day the same day, like just hit me up randomly. This is like so far from what I would do today. Like, See, I know, didn't. I is, didn't know that. I thought that you guys had planned this. No, for, not at all. For a while. No, not at all. This was exactly same day he wow. hits me up and I just accepted it. I just, I, I dismissed, I was like too dismissive, downplaying him too, like sleeping on him too hard. You're like, eh, why Too not? reliant on, I, I believed in Ivan too hard. I thought he was, <laughs> I, I thought he was showing up. It just bad calls on my end all the way around. I don't think I lost on like a skill level. I feel like I lost com completely on just making bad calls all around right it just compiled into me getting super frustrated and nothing come nothing good comes after that if you're trying to like play a serious set in marvel and you got you're in the wrong headspace so it, all this culminates in a disaster unfortunately this is kind of like one of those uh, times i'm i don't like to revisit you know because <clears throat> but the thing is that everybody has has their opinion on it right sure like what matters and then this is kind of why we do this is yeah. so that there's complete transparency and that everything is on the table like right. the fact that you took it on 
less within than 24, hours within hours within yeah hours. that's a big deal yeah, yeah so, so so he he finally, he finally makes it over he 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 gets there ivan's not there so. shit so all right he's there whatever ivan's not there it is what it is i i guess it's time to play you know like and, before that though the rules you guys talk about the rules right i i think we might have now I'm a little fuzzy on what the rules were. And the, the only reason why I ask is because the main controversy over the set was the fact that you're a few matches in and Duck is the one who's actually streaming this match. He's he's got the phone right. he's got the phone propped up and Ruben Ruben has the life lead and he's chipping okay, he's chipping so... you out and the the controversial aspect was that Duck was saying Ruben doesn't have to do anything fancy. All he has to do is just block. Something to the effect of, and if Ruben just holds black, back or whatever and doesn't fight, he wins by time. Something like it that. It kind of sounds like he's doing a play-by-play. -play. It Right. I'm not saying... Now, here was my... So, so as I was saying earlier, like all this shit just kind of snowballs into a terrible situation. Oh, yeah. And in my, like, mentally, it snowballed. So I'm in the set. I'm already pissed off before it even began. I'm pissed off at Ivan, you know, like, mainly. Um, and I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm psyching myself out all wrong. I'm like, I'm fucked now because, you know, Ivan didn't show up. I didn't rust off. I'm fucked. Like, I'm sitting there in that mentality. Yeah. I'm trying to play under that mentality. I'm already pissed off. And it starts snowballing and, you know, the, um, I think it's only like, it's not even that bad at this point. It's only like one or two matches in his favor. And I know duck is trying to film the match and out of the corner of my ear, I hear him saying that comment, like he's, Oh, that, Oh, if he just holds back, he wins the match or whatever. And, and you know, the thing is like Ruben is closer to him than I am. And I'm just kind of like, I took it kind of like all wrong. Like, even though I feel like saying things like that out loud are going to pollute the match, like honestly, yeah, I don't think it was malicious on Duck's part. I feel like he was just kind of, you know, now in retrospect, looking back, I, I you know, that was my mistake is that I, I see, you know, Ruben hit me up all of a sudden to play this match and then duck shows up and then, you know, I hear that and it makes me think that, Oh, are they like colluding against me or the, something? The pieces like, are, you're trying yeah, to the fit pieces, pieces are, I'm trying to fit pieces together in my head and I'm trying to, I'm like, are, am I being colluded? Like what's going on here? Like, and, and so I start jumping to conclusions and that was my unfortunate mistake where I, I oh, accused man. duck. I got up and I accused duck of coaching, you know, Ruben and I tell him that you know this set has been polluted I'm not going to you know I'm not going to play it unless we start over from zero Can I stop you right there Okay Duck didn't help oh, in in your defense Duck didn't help by saying nobody said there was no coaching Nobody said there was no oh. no co the, that there was a no coaching rule. Right now, this video so, is still floating around yeah, somewhere, it's, and it's I do there. remember. So by him saying that, kind uh, of solidified your your original conclusion was that he his was. suspicions. Yeah, it solidified. So his that suspicions. didn't that didn't help at all. So yeah, that kind of fucked up there too. So the rules were just like you know, first to ten for a hundred or whatever. That's 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 what we. I, I look at Duck as like he's one of the you know OG pillars of the right, community. Right, yeah. I don't think I need to tell him no coaching. Exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I just assumed automatically like he's gonna he he's a fan of the game. He's just gonna be in a neutral position. That was my assumption. Right. And but then, but everything happened so fast. Though. Right. Everything. So so you went off and you said hey there's no coaching and then Duck Duck makes the oh nobody said that you couldn't do that comment mm -hmm. and then you jumped into it okay well you you broke your own your own rule of, of no coaching so the only way this is going to happen is if we reset that was something zero. that ruben said yeah. that ruben was afraid that since i got more bodies there on my side yeah. than him that it would be unfair if they start coaching me yeah 
So I'm just like, fine, whatever. No coaching then. That, that's kind of like a pain in the ass, though. It's it's like you said, there are there are certain rules that you should automatically expect to be in play when you do a money match. And, and I'll give you an example, like the, the Roundhouse versus a Smooth Viper fiasco at Evo. Oh, oh, with, oh my God. With him uh, resetting the game <laughs> right Start before the winning. part two, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they talked about it beforehand, right? It's You can have your opinion on it, but if you look at it in black and white, Smooth Viper reset the game. And it was a rule that had already been established prior to. It's like there's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. It's an unpopular result, but right. that, that's what it's for. So you want to, even though it's it's, it's Nobody wants to see the match end like that. Yeah. But... We have these type of rules in we place rules, because, yeah. unfortunately, things like this happen, yeah. and we got to know what to how to deal with it when it does happen. Um, so, as for, as unfortunate as it is, rules are rules. That's right. Yeah, I mean, some of the rules that are pretty common, like you don't really have to go over the switch glitch, uh, keeping the same team uh, on a win, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the one that's kind of up in the air is what happens if the game resets? What happens if you hit pause? Now is there coaching allowed? You know what I mean? One rule that I also think is should be a dead rule that doesn't matter anymore. And I've been called on this by only one player ever when I would play in like a tournament. It would be um that the other Strider Doom player, Devil X. He was like, You have to keep the same order. So you so I can't switch glitch twice basically oh yeah, yeah. and i'm just like what <laughs> we, we did away with that a long right? time ago yeah um evo 2014 i remember josh 360 tried to make me do that saying hey no you can't shit. yeah you got to keep the same order so if you switch glitch you can't do it again on a win uh-huh and i oh no, i switch complied on win. Yeah, just to make him feel better like i complied i said oh, really okay, that's cool oh, yeah no shit. and, it, and okay. it, it cost me the set no he shit. sent me. To, yeah, he sent me to losers. Ooh. But so it was like a soft rule that you guys yeah, agreed on. Yeah, and and there's other but things. There's no rule against it. There's other okay. things. I don't know. Like like uh oh a ten minute break halftime. Oh, for money matches. Right. Yeah. I don't like that. Like there's. <sighs> I, do I don't know like about that, 10 minutes. 10 minutes seems kind of long. Neo would take 30 minutes. Right? No, no break. Yeah, we all know the legendary <laughs> Neo break. <Yeah. laughs> 30, a 30 30 minute break, yeah. G-Con? Oh. There is such a thing as momentum. You're on fire. Right. You, you go on a streak and nothing can, can stop you easier than, hey, quick break. I'm just saying if oh, you're the yeah. better player, then yeah. yeah, just show you're the better player. Right. So you guys reset the, the set? You no. Know, oh, no. No, we didn't. Uh, that was my that, that I said this is kind of unfortunately even if it was just a mistake on Duck's part I mm-hmm. still think we should have reset the the score because the match was kind of polluted not right. gonna lie right. like objectively if if the video is still kind of floating around out there it's gonna show it yeah um, I think it is I think it's if you look deep enough. It's in that Facebook group somewhere. Maybe. Oh, God. You know, it's like, it, it's an unfortunate moment in, right, in yeah. the history. But either way, it's kind of like I got pushed back. Like, I'm being unreasonable by wanting that. So I'm just kind of begrudgingly like, you know what? Fuck it. Whatever. Let's just get this shit over with. But it's, in my head, it's like I'm already done. I'm I'm checked out at this point. You weren't in the right headspace. I'm gone. Dude. Yeah, my sh- my my head for playing is just gone at this point, and it just I, it's just like I just want to at this point I just want to give Ruben his, I just want to pay him to leave. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just just crumple up the bills. Go, bro. <laughs> Tuck it into his freaking Maybe polo Maybe that's probably what shirt. I should have done is just like, you know what? The set's over. Here's your money. That's that's probably, yeah. in retrospect, that's what I should right. have done. Yeah. Did you even consider a run back after? Oh, absolutely. I immediately, I was like, I want to, I don't want an immediate run back. Mm. I want to set a date for a run back so I can get in shape and beat the fuck out of you. Because I know I can. You just caught me on a bad fucking day. So let, you know, 
I let him know it. We're going to run this back because, you know, I felt like the conditions of that whole match were bullshit. And we're going to clear this up. So if you think you're good and, if you, you know, if you think you're still better than me, let's just run it back again. You know, let's let's make it happen. Dude starts playing games and he starts <laughs> fucking because he knows I'm going to come ready now. It's going to be a different fucking story. He starts doing like I played him for 10 for 100. He wants to play for 500 now. Oh, shit. So it's like I can't have a run back unless I. it's like I got to meet his amount or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why, dude? I took your your challenge within hours and it was for a hundred dollars. If I want to run back it means we're running it back. It's going to be for a hundred dollars because that's what the original match that I'm trying to run back was for. Do you, are we going to do that or no? And it's like, I'll even whatever. We'll do 200. Yeah. No. Still no. Shit. This, this dude completely like. And then finally it got to a point to where I agreed to the 500. And he said, no, I want a thousand. Oh, and that was so just, this, go, this goes back to what we were talking yeah, about. This, he, he did the, the same post. thing as Tong G. Like the, he did oh. the, the same shit, dude. And I was just like, you're a fucking coward. You're you're fucking price blocking me you know that i'm just gonna say no and this is fucking cowardly and and he's like oh but i already i already know i'm better than you i beat you already and blah blah, blah. and i'm like motherfucker though the conditions you beat me under were fucking shit and i'm gonna show you if you stop being a fucking coward and just come out and let's agree on a fucking date and we'll play for a couple hundred bucks stop at stop fucking ducking me yeah he continues to fucking say, oh, like, I'm only looking forward to playing Roundhouse at Evo, and that's it. And then I'm going to retire. <laughs> and I'm just like, you fucking piece of shit, dude. No, dude he ain't. And, and even Duck came out later on in my defense saying, you only took the match because, it, like, you got the match because it was convenient for you. It wasn't convenient for him. He accommodated you. So you're you're taking too much credit, basically. It's true, yeah. And he he ended up beating Roundhouse at Evo. Yeah, I I ended up. You know, oh man, I, I lost I, I money. I bet money that. on I I won money on that because I, I lost like, money on that, dude. I lost a hundred bucks. I put up a hundred bucks on Roundhouse's behalf, damn. and then I also side bet fifty with the uh, serve butt. Oh yeah, so damn. double damn. the loss, man. <laughs> and I was I was kind of pissed off because Ruben and I were having our our own squabble like on the side yeah and we personally didn't get along we didn't see eye to eye and oh, shit. at evo yeah. he beat roundhouse and he was popping off and i called him out i said play me motherfucker oh. you want to bully you know you want to try to bully this guy whatever play uh-huh. me and he would always deflect and say well wouldn't why don't you go challenge uh, jay wong oh my god go play jay wong and i'm like i am oh my god <laughs> I'm like i am bro yeah like, but it's Bro. it's just there was a lot of salt man a lot of salt flowing and yeah yeah i don't think i mean ruben did cut did come around he's come around to thrillers a couple times yeah like i i seen ruben recently and it's kind of like whatever like you feel like that ship sailed already yeah it's yeah. kind of like water under the bridge like i'm cool i could see ruben be like cool with him or whatever yeah. because at, i mean there's nothing really for there's nothing really for me to feel bad about it it's just I got, I kind of got screwed over and had a bad day. But other than that, he ran from my challenge. Right. So I don't have to feel, <laughs> I don't have to feel bad about it. At the end of the day, I feel like I come out looking better from that. So it's like I don't have a grudge against Ruben. Right. Whatever. If he wants to avoid me, then that's fine. Like that's why we do this, man. Now that all the facts are on the table, now everybody has more of a clear picture of right. you know of of what happened. Um, man, I would want it. I still would want to see that set again. Are you guys uh, to oh, run it? Oh, I would definitely play Ruben again. <laughs> you know, definitely. like I, I think everybody wants to see that. Um, the next topic, as as we kind of uh, bring this to a close, mm. 2016 and beyond, we saw things kind of start to die down a little bit. 
like 2017 we had evo right mm. uh you get ivan is doing some extracurricular things for the community even as as much as i didn't like him back then i still appreciated him doing things like making t-shirts for you guys oh yeah uh he would make he would have trophies made uh medals you know for for first for oh yeah top eight, trophies I think. and medals and yeah he was he was spending money out of his own pocket to kind of contribute to the community a lot was, of people don't know that even to the the crew it's kind of like for us he would book the hotel room and stuff you know for us so we didn't have to worry about it we just give him the money you know i'm like oh sweet i so it's like i even did all this shit for us like he made us the t-shirts booked the hotel room like he made going to evo easy it's like he he was a great contributor there uh yeah, you so, got you got to give him his props. Yeah, in shout that, out to in that regard. Yeah, definitely. Um, twenty eighteen, we already know that Evo was a fucking disaster, dude. Oh, my it God. was a disaster. Oh, I don't yeah. remember. Now I didn't go to that y- yeah, year. Yeah, there was no singles tournament. There was just a team tournament. Oh, that's right. And we had to cancel it because nobody showed up the next day. I everybody, remember everybody one was, particular individual who was very. Uh, making his voice heard about how oh uh you're talking about you're talking about kodiak yeah Yeah, that dirt bag was all (laughs) over with with negative energy the whole morning saying well my team is here so go give them a a little breakdown of what so we had a three-on-three tournament because uh nobody we didn't have enough people to do a singles i think so it was just a three on three, and I showed up super late because I had to work that Friday, mm. and they decided to do the three on three tournament Friday. Jeez. I get there like at maybe nine p.m. Yeah, I I run in, dude. I bolt to the to the freaking ballroom, and my first match is against like uh, Sanford. San, it was wow. Sanford, yeah, Sanford Video, and I think Blue Jay. They were on one team, oh my and it God. was me. No, no, it was me. No, not video. It was me, video, and Xavier. Remember Xavier? Uh, Gene Splice from Puerto Rico. It sounds familiar, but damn. I don't even remember. Bald Is guy, it? tall, bald guy. Anyway, uh, it was it was us three, and then it was Sanford Matrix and somebody else, and we lost. Oh. Yeah, I lost to Sanford. Um, and then that was it. They were already going to close the the ball the venue. Yeah, the oh, venue. They so you said, had to do right, to be continued. Everybody come back tomorrow. Uh-huh. So the next day when we show up, it's like 10 a.m., 10.30. Nobody's there except for me, J-Tron, <laughs> Video, uh, Sanford, Desmond, Kodiak is there. I don't know who else. What happened to the pot? Is there a pot for this tournament? I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Wow. What, I don't know what happened to the money. <laughs> uh-huh. But we had main stage time reserved for the three on three so ah. they were telling us they were telling us hey you guys got a spot yeah you guys what, what are you guys gonna do uh-huh we're like oh, fuck right. there's no tourney because nobody's here why don't we just do an exhibition right so we took it upon ourselves to do a three on three east coast so versus you west made, coast yeah you made that up out of who was there right the so time. it was it was uh sanford desmond video versus right. me duck and jtron yeah i remember that yep and we did it and kodiak was pissing his pants <laughs> saying oh man this isn't right this isn't right you know it and i'm like dude we're, dude we're we're doing what we can to salvage and he was like well it's not fair that my team is here i don't, I don't even know who his teammates were it, even if your team's there if the other team's not there you can't do anything you yeah can't... and nobody wants to see you on stage <laughs> <laughs> go grab a fucking fat tuesday and 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 you, sit down. You're you dismissed. Stole his shine, bro. Yeah, you're dismissed, bro. Get out of here. Go, <laughs> go <dismissed>. get. Dismissed. <laughs> go get. Look, when when Evo gives you a, a spot to display, you know. Yeah, especially uh, on the stage. Marvel two. Yeah. Take it seriously and put your best foot forward. So I agree. Yeah, mind you, this is being streamed. It's It's being being recorded. I mean. Represent the community properly. And we're trying to get as many eyes as possible on this. And I'm sorry that not everybody is fucking marketable. Right. You know, you have to look at it that way (laughs) also. So this was the disaster that was 2018. 2018. I mean, we did what we could. Uh, I ended up getting the win, the winning win against uh, Desmond. Nice. And that was it, man. Like, yeah, there that's. That's all I remember. Yeah. I, and I remember they gave us uh, top eight medals 
like like Evo side oh, tournament medals cool. anyway. Servbot grabbed one just to grab just one. Just for the fuck of it. <laughs> and he, made a, he made a post. Hey, look, everybody, I'm top eight. Champ, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I remember that. Dope. 2019. Do you remember the 2019 Evo? I do, yeah. Were you there? I was, uh-huh. Yeah, what do you remember from that Evo? Uh, I remember kind of protesting the tournament. Really? Yeah. Like, I was cool with it at, like... 50 bucks but i didn't want to pay 100 bucks or yeah something. i was like vocal about it yeah. like on the, online but then when i got there later i was like all right whatever fuck it it's it's a one-time deal i'll you know here's a, i'll pay the 100 bucks i told i'll tell ivan go sign me up and uh fuji's the one running the um the signups or whatever and he goes, nah, basically, like, tell Kung Fu Joe go fuck himself just ba- b- just because he disagreed about the the price online or whatever. You're saying he didn't let you sign up? He didn't Holy let me sign shit. up. Holy shit. Yeah. So I was like, all right, whatever. I won't be in your stanky little tournament anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, <laughs> so I remember I, I uh, beat free lunch again for a money match at that Evo. I had to fill my time somehow, but. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching you and uh, Duck in Grand Finals. On, oh, that. dude, that yeah, that was an intense set. That was, that was intense. Now that I remember yeah. it, yeah. Twenty nineteen was arguably my best year. Mm. It was. Argu- I, I think it was one of mine too, as far as like a little bit of my old shine coming back. Because yeah. after Evo, it's like I had trained for Evo like a little bit, mm-hmm. but not enough to want to like you know do it for a hundred bucks until I was there and mm-hmm. I was getting FOMO and I was just like, fuck it, let me do it. But whatever. And then, but later on after Evo super arcade closes and Mike Watson hosts the farewell tournament. Basically. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, we had a lot of great memories at super arcade shout outs to Mike Watson for keeping it going as long as he definitely did. man. That was a great spot. Man. It was kind of right in the middle of where everybody was at. Yeah. Everyone was able to, to easily to go accessible. There. Great, great parking. Um, yep. yep. Just a great spot, man. Yeah. I miss that place. I miss it too. For sure. Yep. If if it existed today, you and the AA guys could definitely oh, run it there. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was a great neutral spot for Marvel for sure. Yeah, and Mike Watson's a huge fan of the game. Yeah, he really is. Loved it's very running surprising. all those exhibitions and tournaments over yeah. there. So, nice. shout out to him for sure. But I mean, we he had he hosted a farewell tournament for Marvel Two. I think it got like over sixty people. I think it got more than Evo. More than Evo, yeah. And um. I remember I ended, I ended up making top eight at that tournament and I was telling myself leading up to that tournament, I was like, I'm going to get top eight. Like I remember telling myself like that was the goal. Some people shit on that goal. Like I still think if you get top eight in a SoCal tournament, that's fucking better than getting top three at an East coast tournament. In my opinion, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. yeah. We have a uh, more variety we got just Higher more caliber. variety, more killers. Yeah. Like they got some killers. We got more killers who are on their level or above. So it's yeah, kind of like not even the pool is not even close. Yeah. Um, what would it take to get you to crack till dawn? Oh my Rambido? God, baby. <laughs> oh, are you so serious? Question? <laughs> <laughs> now, as much as I would want to travel in like see New York and stuff like that, um, man, it just, the, like time wise it doesn't look like anytime soon in the it's cards it's not that easy anymore man yeah dude considering your your situation i mean you have a family now you got to yep. request the pto secure yep. the flight figure out pay for the lodging and all that you yeah know, it's it's a pain in the, the family for a while like yeah speaking from and, experience and like and it, think about you know for me in my head i gotta have this play this conversation out with my wife oh <laughs> wife I'm going to go to New York. <laughs> That's You're her going name. All, no, yeah, like I'm just. Like, <laughs> uh, excuse me, wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, wife, <laughs> I'm going to go to New York. What the hell? Across the country? What for? Oh, you know that video game I like playing in my garage that you hate? <laughs> that I'm going to go do that. No, she 
she's totally fine with my hobbies. Like that's what, what I love about her is she, she knows that every man's got to have a hobby or whatever. She supports mine, but it's like, come on, like you're going to go across the country know, for man. like this game. Like at some point it's like, come on, you know, I do eventually want to travel for something like fight kingdom or something like that. That seems dope. Um, yeah. Fight kingdom is the, that's the first, premier event yeah. for Evo. I mean, for Evo, for Marvel Two, it's not. It's not Evo. It's not fucking Combo Breaker. It's not. Oh it's not man! Fight in the North. It's, Is this what it's gonna be? Well, hold on, Fight because Kingdom. I I think we gotta give, I think we gotta give Evo a chance next year, just because they might do something. We'll see. Yeah. For the 25th anniversary right. and the the Versus Collection. Yeah, definitely. We have to start getting ready for that. As we get closer, we'll get more info. Exactly. There'll be more announcements that are officially made so we can see if whether or not Evo's worth going to, mm-hmm. man. Definitely, yeah. Joe, you're you're a man who is not afraid to give his opinion. Sometimes it can get you into, into some hot water because some people oh, consider yeah. it to be an unpopular opinion or whatever the case is. Facebook, it's, it's kind of like a private business, right? Like, you have... A certain degree of free speech but if you're part of a group or you're under the group's rules you're under moderation right some people can can choose to implement uh some kind of restriction or something you recently experienced that with one of the mods preppy yeah what happened there so uh, let's see how far we have to take it back here Oh shit, how far is it? <laughs> it's not that far. But I mean, basically it starts off with Well, Preppy me and Preppy had a falling out around, you know, 2020-ish uh over like opposing political views basically. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people were pretty divided around that time. Mm-hmm. Um and still are still are yeah, yeah still are and and me and preppy will never never agree there for sure but i mean the thing is that's not something i typically see as a reason to end a friendship with somebody i it's for me i could just be like eh you're kind of wrong here but that's fine him him well like so i'll just put it out there it's like i'm definitely more of a conservative he's definitely more on the left the left is a lot more tolerant in my view of conservative people. And they are the ones who will more willingly leave the friendship over political, political views. You're saying, you're saying less tolerant, less tolerant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The left, the people on the left are much less tolerant in my opinion, because it's like they see you as some kind of deplorable person who's infinitely wrong and want to get away from you or whatever, or have heavy judgments against you. Whereas I kind of like, from my perspective, I'm like, Hey, whatever, you know, like I could, we could have a conversation about where we disagree and how we disagree and the facts of the matter. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's you. And you know, if I, you know, I believe in God, I believe, you know, whatever, God's going to judge you. He's going to judge me. It's not my judgment to judge you, whatever. I could leave it alone. It's not a huge deal to me. Mm But for whatever reason, we are now heavily divided along those lines because he's so dug in on his side. Um, So now that puts a target on my back as far as being moderated in the group because he is obsessed with me. He is just following because no (laughs) other moderator. It's like he makes it well known that he is the one enforcing action against me he makes no secret about it right yeah. other moderators might do it and just kind of you know okay there's six of them who did it and nobody puts their hands up type of thing he's proud to let himself let me know that he's the one you know being heavy-handed with the things i could do or say on the, the facebook group so it's like okay dude it's kind of weird that the other mods i'm cool with a lot of them they could just direct message me and be like, hey, Joe, this post is a little too spicy. Maybe could you take it down or maybe rethink your words or maybe, you know, something to that effect? I'll be like, all right, bet. Cool. Uh, I'll go do that. Him. I mean, I'll leave replies to certain uh, comments or whatever, like 
the the you know like Trump doing that scoff where he's like oh and then he goes to the side <laughs> like that and it's like that reply I'll notice will go missing and I'm like no shit oh shit I and didn't I'll even just know that. I'll like repost it again repost it again and it keeps getting deleted keeps getting deleted and I'm just like that's fucking weird and it's like that makes me feel like this dude is following me all the fucking time on this thing well so, for context what happened recently was sanford made a facebook post. right okay like, sanford makes a random random he he does them all well he's not in the group anymore but he would do them quite often like he'll just yeah. put something random out now there. quick pause here now yeah. preppy accuses me of misunderstanding Sanford. So Ken, why don't you lay out what that post all it was all about and what it translates to you? So Sanford made a post and I'll I'll read it word for word that way there's no uh miscommunication on what he said. Give me one sec, let me go ahead and pull it up. And I mean it's a forum where you can just like say whatever you want, right? Not exactly. I mean, not, whatever I mean, you want. I mean, but I mean if, as long as you're not breaking any rules. Within the context of the game, it should be fair play. Like, it should be, you know, if if you want to debate topics within the game, if you want to debate characters, tiers, stuff like that, I feel like that should be allowed, right? Yeah. And those are the types of posts that come up, and there should be discussions and um debates around discourse yeah. discourse this yeah. is what he said he said this game is more about execution than decision making being the smarter player means nothing if you can't execute a game plan or combos i'm not saying decision making doesn't matter because it absolutely does just execution matters the most in this game you have to finish and i disagreed and I, yeah. and I commented and I said, I don't think that one outweighs the other. In order for the execution to be implemented, one must decide when it's the right time to do it. It cannot be implemented without proper decision making. It's not enough to know the combos or execution. Proper decision making that creates opportunities for said combos also needs to be present. Right. And he disagreed. And he disagreed. And he and with no real... Right, no, f- up no factual, n- yeah. And and f- coming from experience, when you have a debate, you can't just say no, I disagree. You're wrong because you're wrong. Yeah, you have yeah. to have some kind of substantial defense in yeah. your part. Right, and I, and I I didn't get it, so I was just, eh, I guess we'll agree. I to guess disagree. we're just, yeah. And then Joe, you made you made a post. So I made a mock post basically because I felt like Sanford has been coping on this topic for a long time and i just feel like at some point you gotta like lampoon the guy a little bit so that he gets the fucking picture and it's just like come on dude like knock it off right like i don't want with the game coming back i don't want people like you with influence trying to set the tone that magneto is possibly a bannable character like not just oh he's a little broken but possibly like should be on the bandwagon and i'm just like no 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 we're not gonna have any of that here like we're not gonna kick it off like this new beginning with you getting magneto banned or whatever or you even starting that conversation like knock it off bro like that is just silly you're an evo champ what are you doing <laughs> this seems this seems like so irresponsible to me if you want to contribute to the community, right? I feel like he's saying nothing. And I'm basically making this post like, oh, you know, oh, you know, have to use brain. You just move joystick and press button good. Like, and you win. Yay. Like, basically, uh, something along those yeah. lines. And it is what it is, bro. A lot. It got mostly like positive, you know, reactions. Everyone knows I'm trolling. I'm having a little fun, but it's also poking fun at this, this cope type argument that I feel like, you know, Sanford, this is Sanford's basically in a nutshell. Do you want this guy representing, you know, the community? I, this was like one of the Evos. Uh, oh, one of the Evos um, I went to, I think it was like 2016, 2017. 
Sansford is playing casuals with Jtron, and in one of the matches, Jtron like hits him with a double snap in the beginning of the game, and Sanford just gets up and says, "See, this, that's the shit I don't, I don't like. That's just this, that corny shit. This shit's fucking corny." And he gets up and he just leaves, dude. And Jtron's just kind of stunned, like, "What?" Like, because he just got up, had a meltdown, and left. And we didn't see him in the Marvel two, you know, section again that year. And oh, just, oh yeah, this was uh, 2016. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, really, bro? Like, this, you, this is who you, this is how you're going to represent yourself in this community, like represent this community to the rest of people. Like, so you, I just feel like there's got to be room to call people out on their bullshit. I don't think that the admins should be bending over backwards to give like special privilege or to make sure that nobody's hurting the fifis of the, you know, top players or something <laughs> like, no dude. Like if they, if I got something factual to call out or some erroneous argument that he's making, that, sh that conversation should just be had. You should just allow that to happen. I agree. I don't think that this tone policing is going to work in a community that's full of self-described assholes. Yeah. That that is the, like a death sentence for this community. So I know, like, it, you know, if people like Preppy have their way, this community is going to be so sterilized. Well, that, that was my biggest gripe with uh, with Fight Kingdom, like the the guys that came over from Canada. Oh, okay. just completely being belligerent and and saying shit while we were on the main stage. I think they were calling Pasadena a bitch. Wow. They were calling, they were calling me names. What the fuck? Who the fuck are these guys? Preppy's there, dude. Like, he's there. And mind you, the mic is picking all of this up. Like, if you go back and watch the uh -huh. footage, you can hear them saying all of these obscenities. Wow. And this is with Twitch. You know, they're, they're streaming on Twitch. They're sponsors. You know, Jeez. nobody said anything yet, but you're kind of rolling the dice by letting this happen in, in a tournament environment. Well, here's the thing. Preppy's not behind a keyboard, so he's kind of powerless without his keyboard. I mean, <laughs> you can still kind of... All it takes is for you to walk over and say... I mean, I was the only one yeah, that called these guys that out. that requires you to have a spine. And you know, <laughs> like, that's the... When I get... Sh I catch shit, it's mostly from these low-T androgynous males, and it's just kind of like... <laughs> okay, bro, I see the way you do things, and now I'm hearing that you can't even regulate things you would yeah. gladly regulate within the Facebook group. You're, you'd are you be on top of it in a second. But yeah. on a live event where you could pick the shit up on the mic and you're not regulating, it's like that just goes to show what kind of person you are, dude. Yeah, we can fix that, though. It's it's a double standard that we, that we can't have. It yeah, should be we, fixed. We can yeah. fix it. We can That's fix where it. that more heavy handedness should be yeah. when it's like public. I don't think just because now here's the thing. I only got action against me for making that post, not because it violated any rules, but because Sanford left. He right. rage quit the group because yeah. of that post. And it's like, look, dude, I didn't have any control over that. If he wanted to leave on his own, that's that. But, you know, you're trying to tell me that I knowingly made Sanford feel unwelcome as if I predicted that he was going to leave from that. Yeah. That's bullshit. People can make up their own decisions. And if they want to, you know, be that fragile about things, then that's their right. I don't think I need to be reprimanded for that. But. You know, whatever. I think the future of this community should probably move more like to Twitter and because at least there's more like free speech allowed there. Um, if they continue, the, the Facebook group is valuable and can be valuable in the future. But if it continues to go this way to where people are not violating any real rules, but are but they're, they're not able to express themselves, it's going to suck. And another thing is like some of the best characters in Marvel two in the Marvel two community are banned from the group. Mike chaos, Andy doom, Tong motherfucking G. These guys are all banned and, and the world does not get to experience these guys that yeah. th these are some of the ingredients that make the Marvel <laughs> two. I mean, one of I our agree. claims to fame is Mike chaos saying, is this really good on me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's just Facebook is not what it used to be. It's, it's so not. regulated now. That it's like watered down, man. Yeah, I mean, I've been hit with 30-day bans Jesus. before over, you know, one-word responses, and it's just crazy. It's not what it used wow. to be, man. Uh, just different times. Even if they were allowed back in, I think that they'd cancel themselves within within minutes. Oh, yeah. They, they <laughs> within minutes, like record time. Yeah, it's just different <laughs> times, dude. Thankfully, we can still have conversations like this, you know, on a platform like this. And yeah. I love discourse until it becomes emotionally induced when somebody gets too into their feelings mm -hmm. that's when you see oh shit we're not really getting anywhere here um that's why i appreciate i appreciate being able to have these conversations because it's just as long as you keep it grounded with facts as much as you can i mean where can you go wrong really right we can have a difference in opinion and still bump fists afterwards right mm -hmm. you know yeah and i you know i understand that the AA is probably still going to be pissed off after this or whatever. Like Daniel's still going to have his opinions and shit, but it's like, I did my best, bro. I came out here and I tried to tell like the, the truth of the, the matter. And it is what it is, dude. Like it, when I was, when I saw him at uh, reloaded, like we were kicking it we we're it was cool having a good time. Now, just because I relitigated the past, now it's a problem all of a sudden. <laughs> Just come on, dude. Just get the fuck over it already. Knock it off. Yeah, he's he's really pushing for some kind of resolution. And I think it's it's just the he's, money match. It's, it's not I guess, but the, the the it's not realistically gonna happen as far as like replicating the exact like everything. That my condition, how much money we're gonna put on it, it's never gonna be exactly the same as it was back then. So we'll have something maybe, but it's not gonna be that special. If you, if there is a something that's going to happen, I already told you, Aldo Akuma I'll play him. You know, like if they want to show up at the Arcade Shock tournament in October, that would be a good spot. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to try to go. We could play there. Hell yeah! What is it going to take on your side? Any special stipulations? Any requirements? Just like look, if, if I'm not going to be playing for like any super high amount of money we're talking like 20 like, bucks 50 yeah, bucks yeah fine yeah. fine dude like fine but if you're asking for more than that and i don't want to oh well it, that's, that's just the way it is, is. <laughs> and things will never be the same <laughs> <laughs> all right joe we're gonna go ahead and bring it uh bring it to a close here um thanks again man for coming back on thank you yeah regardless of what people say bro they they wanted this episode all right? yeah absolutely man i don't care what you guys say yeah. you guys wanted this People right? for this <laughs> yeah uh don't forget guys we have uh the arcade shock tournament coming up the omega elite is going to be hosting this um we are trying to set up uh some stretch goals here uh we have some matchups that are on the table that we want to to uh put out there as goals for the matcherino i'm still debating on answering i don't th as of now, I don't think I'm going to enter just to entice more people to participate. Mm. But um, that way it could be anybody's. Yeah, because Duck has already kind of taken that route where he doesn't enter tournaments See, anymore. Waiting for the bag to blow up before you <laughs> step on in. Huh? See if it's worth it. <laughs> no, no. I think uh, I have to do my part and help out behind the scenes mm, Okay. Um, with commentary. And, and I really want to. You know what? Maybe you could alternate. Maybe it's like one event you do enter, one event yeah. you don't. I don't, you know. I really want to learn the TO side of things. Okay. I've never done that before this late in the game, and I, I just want to cross that off my list. Yeah. So I want to see if I can work on that. All right. Um, but we'll, once we have more information, guys, uh, we already have the date. Um, I'll go ahead and post it in the description. Um, if you guys have any feedback or any thoughts on what we can do to make this tournament better, the last one we had was amazing. We had DJ. We had uh, food vendors. Our Kate Shock storefront was open. So if you guys need your equipment looked at, if you want to purchase buttons, parts, whatever the case is, they'll hook you up. Um, Joe, do you have anything else for us? Any shout outs? Anything else you want to add? Um, no. I mean, thank you, uh, Ken. Thanks, Ivan, for having me back. Uh, of course, bro. It's been a blast kind of revisiting uh, some of these, these past uh, events and uh, looking it's forward great, to man. the future. Yeah. 
Maybe we can get a Joe part three oh, sometime. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what let, unfolds after. Yeah, let the let the people speak, right? <laughs> let this marinate. Yes. <laughs> Ivan, what do you got for us, bro? All right, man. Well, thank you so much, Joey, for coming on board again. Yes, um, it's great hearing your story. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of feedback on it. And uh, as always, guys, please leave uh, your feedback in the comments. Any questions or any more uh, guests that you guys want in the future, please let us know. We're always here. To, uh, happy to hear you guys. And uh, thanks for all the support. Yeah, just like he said, guys, thank you for the support. Continue to play, continue to mash, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Peace, Peace out, guys.